to the organizers at MADFEST, as well as Charlie for welcoming me on stage. It is an honor, I'm fully grateful, and also humbled to share my expertise with you today. In addition, thank you for showing up in this room. I also recognize there is so much going on with the festival. You made a choice to commit yourself to here today, and so thank you for listening. So, I don't know if you read the latest report from Gartner, a research agency focused on marketing and AI. And the title was, How Marketers Can Capitalize on AI Disruption. And so in the article it, it states, in 2026, 80% of senior creative executives will be tasked with utilizing generative AI. We are roomful marketers, media folks, creative folks, executive leaders. How many of us are using generative AI in our business? Okay, good amount, good amount. How many of it in production? So facing consumers. Oh, excellent, excellent. I will be honest, this does not look like 80%. And so if the Gartner report is correct, we have about 18 months to get a little bit further along in this generative AI journey. And with that, let's put it a little bit more into context. So just like every other hype cycle, here's another hype cycle for AI um, from 2023 from Gartner. And there are two things to note. The first one is that there's ups, maximums, hype, the peak of expectations, and there are downs, there are minimums, there are uh, troughs of disillusionment, and it's nonlinear. The second thing to note is that there are many different types of AI technologies on this curve, and every single one of these technologies moves along the curve. And so as a leader, as someone who's making very important decisions for your organization, you have to think about, well, which technologies do I make a bet on? Where do I start to test? Where do I start to expand? And wait, bigger question than that. How do I know I'm doing AI? That's a very good question. How many of us use email for work? E email for first, oh yes, 100% merits for me. Uh, so inside of your email, how many of us have actually clicked on spam? No, okay, okay, circle of trust, we don't need to share that. So algorithms that actually split out spam versus not spam, that is a form of AI. How many of us have gone on holiday in the last six months Okay, I love this European style. Us Americans, we have something to learn. So you may have booked a flight, maybe you've booked a hotel. Did the price stay the same every time you look new information up? So dynamic pricing is another form of AI. And so now we have AI in our work, we have AI in our lives. So what does this all mean? My first point, AI is not a vibe. It's not a passing phase, it's not a shiny object, it is here to stay. And so as leaders, as decision makers, we have to make choices about how do we utilize these technologies to actually augment our experience, to make us do what we do best as marketers better. And with that, this is my commitment with, for you today. So I'm going to give you three new ways to think about AI in the context of marketing two ways to think about AI in your life, and one resource to stay up to date. And in transparency, as a technical practitioner, staying up to date and on the latest and greatest is quite difficult. <laughs> and so I hope this begins the journey for you. So what scenario are we in? This is my humble interpretation of Professor Ethan Mollick's latest book, Co-Intelligence, Living and Working with AI. And so inside of the book, he goes through four scenarios around how AI will develop. This is me trying to translate that into movies. And so hopefully it's recognizable. Um, on the left-hand side, we have iRobot, where we have embodied AI, AI that lives in robots that are subservient to humans until things go awry. The next movie is Her. It's a story of an individual person that is slowly developing over time and finding more about themselves concurrently with their AI until things start to go awry. And then we have Ex Machina, an AI embodied robot that develops very quickly and things do go awry. And the final one is The Terminator where AI surpasses humans and things definitely go awry. 
So which scenario are we in? Are we in iRobot? Yes, no, her? Okay, I, can, I, I feel you, I feel you. Okay, ex machina. Okay, sort of, kind of, in between, Terminator? Really? Undecided, I love undecided. Okay, excellent. At the end of this conversation, hopefully I will have opportunity to tell you what I think. And so with that, why listen to me? Uh, so most people who work with me call me Ceci, <coughs> and uh, this is my wall of logos. A couple things to note. First, I've worked in agencies. I've also worked as a brand. I've also worked in universities where I teach and lecture. I teach marketing analytics, data and AI ethics, as well as AI design. And why I love marketing. Marketing is a discipline of storytelling, as alluded to in the previous conversation. We connect people to brands, each other, ideas, and we do this all through telling stories, through communication. And I find that blend of art and science to be fascinating. I am a statistician by training, sorry. Um, I'm also a qualitative and quantitative researcher, very much focused on people. My research areas, I focus on trust signals in interpersonal relationships and how technologies like AI can change that. And more specifically, I'm very, very interested in communications, specifically nonverbal communications and how that is impacted by digital technologies. So an example of nonverbal communication, I am on stage, I'm trying to build rapport with you, I'm trying to build your trust in me as an AI expert. So I'm using a lot of open body language. I'm showing you my palms. Um, this has already been studied quite well, that open palms, open body language shows sign, uh, is a signal for sharing honesty, transparency, and hopefully at the end of the day, begin to build trust. So asking a big question in the room, which of our jobs are going to be replaced by AI? Oof, an easy feeling. So what does a researcher do? I gather data and then I look at it. Uh, so what I did was I took a whole bunch of brand manager job descriptions and I clustered different competencies, skills, and tasks. And what you see in the bold is actually tasks that can be augmented by AI. So help, AI can help us do these things better. And the ones in italics, are the tasks where, oh gosh, it's repetitive. We can do this over and over again. Maybe we can get AI to automate this for us. But as alluded to in the previous conversations, we always wanna make sure we have human in the loop. And so the actual thing to note of the slide is there are many tasks that actually don't touch AI. And so when we think about our jobs, the why of why we do marketing, that does not change as a result of AI. The what, the how, that changes as a result of our technologies. And I would argue, given all of these things that a brand manager has to do, AI is excellent at tasks, but not good at jobs. That's why we still need people. And so with that, let's recontextualize artificial intelligence. Let's, let's use new words. We're marketers, we like making stuff up. We like telling ourselves stories. So I'm going to give you three ways to reframe AI for marketing. So AI as authentic interactions. If you follow Substack, I'm actually the author of it. Uh, augmented individuality, and, as well as accelerated innovation. So from the presentation moving forward, I'll be going over some research, uh, some definitions, a few startups in the space that I um, would encourage you to explore for your own organizations. In full transparency, I have no affiliation with any of these startups. However, what makes them exciting to me is that they're pushing the boundaries of what is possible. And so as you are pushing the boundaries of reaching your goals for this year, growing your capabilities inside of AI, I encourage you to take a look and consideration as well. So AI as authentic interactions. Does authenticity still matter to consumers? So this is a study from Ascendia from a few years back. And the quest big question was, does authenticity still matter? And this was a global study. 65% said more likely to shop with brands and retailers who I believe to be authentic. 
73%, I'm more loyal to brands and retailers who I believe are authentic. And 66%, I spend more time with brands and retailers who I believe are authentic. Okay, so authenticity matters. How can we take an AI lens to that to amplify this authenticity? And so this is where I would argue conversational AI. How many of us are already utilizing it? Okay, good amount, yes, check, merits. Um, I would argue this helps us with authenticity. So for those of us who are not as familiar, what is conversational AI? It refers to technologies such as chatbots or virtual agents that users can talk to. Why do I like this type of AI technology? Because it's getting to the heart of what we do as marketers, creating connections. So through conversation, this is how we share ideas. This is how we begin to build trust. And this is how we grow relationships. So let's look at a few startups in the space. Uh, why do I like Quick Chat AI? What I find compelling about their offering? How many of us work in multinational organizations? Yay, challenges. Why? Uh, when we are translating language, not only are we translating words, we are also translating culture. So values, beliefs, and norms that are part of uh, a population. And so Quick Chat AI can assist with doing that multilingual, multicultural translation. Why do I like kiosk? As some of you may have guessed, I have a North American accent, so I am here for a short bit. Um, however, I love using WhatsApp with all of my international counterparts and friends and family as well. And so what Kiosk is trying to do is trying to insert itself into the center of those conversations um, in helping e-commerce brand better connect with their consumers through WhatsApp. And then the what last one, which I really, really like, Play. For those of us who have customer call centers or customer care centers, one of the biggest challenges we have is many of us will probably have IVR systems. So interactive voice response systems. So when you ring up a, a customer care center, suddenly you hear a robotic voice. Uh-oh, that doesn't sound very personable. Uh, that doesn't sound very real. That doesn't sound very authentic. Uh, I don't wanna do this. Press zero, help me find a real person. And so Play uh, specializes in synthetic voices to help you do that. And so these are three uh, startups I would consider as part of your portfolio, if it makes sense for you. Of course, there are always a lot of considerations. Every, every organization has their own specific nuances, but I encourage you to explore this idea of conversational AI. So the second AI, augmented individuality. It's a fancy word. I think maybe for us marketers, we can anchor it in a more traditional idea of uh, personalization. So does personalization still matter to consumers? So this is a study from Deloitte Digital, and it says 50% of consumers said personalization tends to feel off target. Ouch, cringe. Um, but when we do personalization, 38% of consumers recognize it. So most of us are not really doing personalization, and when we do personalization, our consumers don't really get it. So how can AI help us do this better? And so this is where I argue another AI technology, augmented reality, can assist in, doing, in creating those experiences. So what is augmented reality? It's a real-time integration of digital information into a user's environment. Why do I argue AR as opposed to VR? Has anyone ever put on an Oculus? And no neck pain, no physio, nothing, we're all good, okay. Well, uh, I find it a little bit cumbersome to use VR devices at this point in time, and therefore mixing physical and digital together through augmented reality, I think is a lower hanging fruit, closer to reality, close to being um, much more ubiquitous in the marketplace. So let's look at some startups. Uh, so if you're working in jewelry or watches or beauty or skincare, try on tech. A virtual try-on technologies are so key as part of your arsenal in marketing. Uh, I would argue that Mirror AR is really great at blending in that physical and digital together. Metadome, what I like about them, they first started in automotive and they were very much focused on creating 3D models that could live inside of mixed reality environments. So again, another application of, oh, can I mix physical and digital together to create a unique 
bespoke real experience for consumers. And the last one, scope, this one I find very interesting, um, not a traditional marketing uh, application at all. It, they started in manufacturing and aerospace. And so you can imagine getting a spaceship into, into space could be quite complicated, the machinations of the machinery itself. So they were very obsessed with trying to create visualizations that were easier to understand, such that everyone working on whatever project to get into space could understand it quickly. And so it was for internal training. So imagine if you're a marketer trying to market a new product. So you're trying to create a marketplace and you have to educate the consumer. So I used to work uh, for an alcohol beverage company. Uh, they made very, very fancy champagnes. And one of the pain points in the US market in particular around champagne is that most Americans and most American consumers uh, can't tell the difference between champagne, cava, or prosecco. It's bubbly wine, isn't it? And so it was a very big frustration. Okay, we, we know the difference, right? Yeah, we do? Okay, yes, we do. Um, it was a very big pr frustration. And so uh, potentially a, a technology like Scope could be a way of educating your consumers in an interactive way that's novel and non-threatening and is part of their day-to-day -day experience. And so with that, our third AI, AI is accelerated innovation. I'll have to be honest, we cannot have an AI conversation without discussing generative AI. So this is the spot where I'm putting it in. This space is so new, so dynamic, so changing. Even AI researchers who are focused on addressing challenges like hallucinations, so the outputs from large language models such that they are plausible, but maybe not true. So that's one big challenge of academic research that they're working on now. So because this is happening so real time, I always recommend that if you are working with generative AI, your counterparts in data are so key. So if it is internal, if it is external, if it is agency, doesn't matter as long as you have experts in the data space and the technology space to help you make these very difficult decisions about what to test, what to try, what to expand, they're a key partnership for you as marketing leaders. So we're gonna talk about generative AI. What do consumers think? Well, 72%, uh, this is a study from Adobe. So 72% of global consumers say generative AI will improve their customer experiences. And 80% of millennials and 83% of Gen Z consumers expressing similar optimism. So what does that mean? That means our consumers are expecting us to utilize generative AI. Okay, great. So what is generative AI? It's an artificial intelligence that can create original content such as text images, video, audio, or software code in response to a user's prompt or request. And so let's look at some startups in the space where I'm very much excited about what they're offering. Um, some of them are going to be a little bit more tech heavy, some of them are a little bit less uh, tech heavy. So the first one is Sid. Um, this is very much hands on keyboard for developers. What makes me excited about Sid is that you're able to utilize LLMs with your customer data inside of apps. And where it gets very exciting is that this uh, Sid is claiming that they can minimize hallucinations. So how do I utilize generative AI in a safe way, in a consumer-centric way? They could potentially help you. What do I love about Credal? So one of the challenges of us marketers trying to work with data is where is our data? I guess it's in, our, uh, in some silo. Do I have some data in my marketing um, folders? Do I have some data inside of my sales folders? Am I trying to coordinate this with my operations because I have to deliver product? And so when you think about customer data, it could be in many different places. And so what Credo offers is a way to utilize LLMs to actually query your data in a way that you're, you're utilizing it without having to fully de-silo your data. And so from that perspective, it could be a very interesting way to make a more holistic picture of your consumer. And the last one I'm really excited about. So as a leader, as a researcher, as a data person, how do I know which generative AI technologies to invest into? Which ones do I make bets on? So as a leader, I've been formally told that you know, my budget has to stay the same going into next year. Or even worse, I have to lose 10%, 20%. And so now I have to find efficiencies. Well, what do we do? How do we make decisions around which uh, 
which AI to use. Well, Magic Loops is a no-code solution that utilizes LLMs to provide automation. So why not have a short pilot where you empower your team, you empower your stakeholders to utilize a solution like Magic Loops to figure out, well, what, what of my processes need to be automated? What of, what of it is boring that maybe the machine should do better for me? And so you can utilize AI to inform your thinking about, well, what bigger types of programs should we invest into? And so I get very excited about Magic Loops because not only are you using AI to figure out AI, so I find that funny, um, but two, you're starting to change a culture. So when you empower the people that are on your teams to take action, to utilize AI, to improve their work, the transition of utilizing AI more and more in your workflows becomes easier. And so with that, I leave you one more idea regarding AI in your lives. AI is not a verb. Not too long ago, I had a senior executive look me in the eye and say, can we AI this? Okay, yeah, exactly. I couldn't laugh. I couldn't laugh. I had to like keep straight face. So in my head, I was thinking, oh goodness, AI is not a verb. Are we losing the plot? Are we losing the focus? And so the main point of that is AI is a noun, it is a tool, it is here to help us augment what we do such that we can create connections to create that experience. And so let's go back to my promises. Did I deliver? So I gave you three ways to think about AI and marketing. So aug authentic interactions, augmented individuality, and accelerated innovation. We talked about conversational AI, augmented reality, and generative AI. I gave you two ways to think about AI in your life. So AI is not a vibe, it's here to stay. And AI is not a verb, it's a noun, it's a tool, it will help us. And one resource to stay up to date. So would you like more consulting? Do you need help with upskilling for your teams? Do you need a technical implementation as well as a change management program? Um, please feel free to reach out to me. If you want to help me with my research regarding digital trust signals, I am more than happy to collaborate. And then one final question, which scenario are we in? My thoughts, I think we're in this scenario. Why? People and technology have a symbiotic relationship, meaning we use our technologies to learn more about ourselves, our lived experience. We practice our agency in our environments with technologies. And with that knowledge, with that wisdom, we inform the technologies we need to build to help us live better lives. And so with that, I'm so grateful for the opportunity today and thank you for your time and attention.